Hey everyone, this video is on introduction to electric fields. An electric field is an area surrounding a charge or charge object that allows it to exert electric force on other charges that lie within its electric field. Electric field strength, or also known as the magnitude of electric field, is defined as the magnitude of force exerted on the charge in the electric field per unit of the charge. Mathematically, this is calculated by dividing the magnitude of force by the magnitude of charge that is affected by this force. The unit of electric field strength is either presented as newtons per coulomb, which is derived from the equation force divided by charge, which we'll explain why later in the video. Electric fields are better visualized by drawing field lines, which are arrows that indicate both the magnitude as well as the direction of the electric field. Specifically, the strength or magnitude of the electric field is indicated by the density of these field lines. When the field lines are closer together, the strength of the field is greater, and when the lines are further apart or lower density, the strength of the field is weaker. For simple point charges, that is, isolated positive or negative charges, the strength of the electric field can be calculated by using this equation 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Again, epsilon naught is the electric permittivity constant of free space. This is 8.854 times 10 to the power of minus 12, as provided by the NESA physics data sheet, times by the magnitude of charge, divided by r squared. r here is the distance that you're measuring the field strength away from the charge. So as you can see here, the field strength of a point charge is inversely proportional to the distance away from the charge squared. The further away you are from the charge, the weaker the field strength becomes. This inversely proportional relationship can also be demonstrated and understood by looking at the density of the field lines. You can see that the arrows are closer together, that is higher density, when it's very close to the charge. And as the lines move radially from the charge, they become further apart, that is lower density, indicating a decreasing field strength. As we said before, electric field strength is a vector quantity, which also has a direction. The direction of electric field lines is always drawn away from positive charges and towards negative charges. In the case of simple point charges, for positive charge, electric field vectors are drawn away from the positive charge, and for a negative charge, the field vectors are drawn towards it. The direction of electric field and field lines is also indicative of where a positive charge would move if it's placed inside the field. For example, if I place a positive charge inside the field lines of this positive charge, the direction of the field line also indicates where the charge would move as a result of the effect of the electric field. In this case, the positive charge will move away radially from the positive charge that provides the field. Electric fields also have an infinite range. Even though the field strength decreases as the distance from the charge increases, the field strength only becomes zero if the distance r approaches infinity, which means the force due to the electric field that acts on the charge also has an infinite range. So no matter where you place a positive or negative charge inside this field, there will always be some amount of force acting over it. The way we draw electric field lines are exactly the same when we place two charges side by side. The field lines will again go away from the positive charge and towards the negative charge. So we can see here that the field lines are extending radially away from the positive charge and radially towards the negative charge. The strength of the field is again indicated by the density of field lines. So in regions where the field lines are very close together, that indicates where the field is stronger. And in regions where the field lines are further apart, that's where the field is weaker. Similar to point charges, the electric fields produced by a pair of charges also has an infinite distance. In electrostatics, the term dipole refers to the electric field produced by two opposite and equal charges. The electric field produced by a pair of opposite, that is positive and negative, equal charges. This diagram illustrates the electric field lines produced by an electric dipole. Notice how the charges are opposite, 
and they should also be equal in magnitude, that is, have the same number of coulombs. These two diagrams illustrate electric field lines between two like charges. When we have two positive charges side by side, the field lines will both radially go away from the positive charge, but as you can see, the field lines from each positive charge will never connect with one another. In fact, they will steer away and repel from each other. This is why the electrostatic force between two positive charges is a repulsive one. The field lines between two negative charges also repel from each other. But if you look closely, the vector for each field line is going towards the negative charge. In both cases, if the charges have the same magnitude, the midpoint between the two charges, that is where my points are being drawn here, will have exactly zero electric field strength. That's because the electric field produced by each charge is exactly equal in magnitude at this midpoint, but opposite in direction. So the vectors will cancel each other out, giving you an electric field strength of exactly zero. What is the implication of this, you might ask? If I place a positive or negative charge at this midpoint, this charge will experience no electric field and therefore will not be acted upon by any electrostatic forces. The third type of electric field that we'll discuss in this video is one that's produced by a pair of parallel charged plates. This setup will produce a uniform electric field, that is, a field that has constant magnitude. This diagram shows a positively charged metal plate at the top and a negatively charged metal plate at the bottom. Again, the field lines will go away from the positive plate and towards the negative plate. I want you to focus on the field lines that's between the two plates. You can see that the field lines are straight and parallel, and most importantly, they are equal distant from one another. This means the density of the field lines is constant and that the electric field strength is also constant. So how do we make a pair of parallel plates charged? The most common way is by connecting the pair of plates to a battery, which produces a potential difference. What this means is that one of the plates that's connected to the positive terminal of the battery will become positively charged, while the other connected to the negative terminal will become negatively charged. The difference in charge is described as the potential difference. And the strength of this uniform field that's produced between the two charged plates can be calculated by taking the potential difference, also known as a voltage, V, and dividing by the distance between the two parallel plates. In this case, the electric field strength is directly proportional to the potential difference. That is, if the difference in charge is larger, then so is the electric field strength. The electric field strength is also inversely proportional to the distance between the plates, which means if we move the plates further apart, the electric field strength will decrease in strength. Most commonly in questions and problems, the uniform electric field created by a pair of parallel charged plates is represented by its two-dimensional side view, whereby the field lines in between the plates are straight and parallel and more importantly equal distance from one another, but the field lines on the two sides of the charged plates are not parallel, in fact they go from the positive to the negatively charged plate in a curved manner. As we mentioned before, electric field strength is defined as the magnitude of force acting on a charge divided by the magnitude of charge it has. So E equals to F divided by Q. If we rearrange this equation to make force a subject, we'll get force equals the charge multiplied by the electric field that the charge is placed within. This is the most common way in which you can calculate the magnitude of electric force or force due to an electric field. The direction of this electric force depends on whether the charge is positive or negative. Using an example of a uniform field between two charge plates, if we have a negative charge, the force direction will be always towards the positively charged plate, whereas the force acting on a positive charge will be in the same direction as the field lines towards the negatively charged plate. So the force directions are exactly the opposite for negative and positive charges. And again, the magnitude of force depends on two factors, that is the charge in themselves in coulombs and also the strength of the field. Keep in mind that for electric field between charged plates, the electric field strength is potential difference between the plates divided by the distance between them.
we can use Newton's second law to derive an expression for the acceleration that's experienced by these charges due to this electric force by replacing force by ma, assuming the electric force is the only force acting on these charges. So therefore, the acceleration is simply QE divided by mass of these charges. All right, let's say I have a positive charge and this positive charge is placed inside an external electric field whose direction is unknown. And due to this electric field, the positive charge experiences a force acting towards the right, F. And we know that F here is equal to Q times by E. What would be the direction of the electric field or the direction of the field lines that produces this force? Well, since this is the positive charge, the direction of the force due to the field will be the same as the direction of the field lines. So the field lines will also run to the right parallel to the force vector. Let's go through another example. I have a negative charge, and this negative charge is placed within an electric field whose field lines will run vertically upwards. What would be the direction of the force vector due to this electric field acting on the negative charge? In this case, because the charge is negative, the force direction will be opposite to that of the electric field lines. So act downward, parallel to the field lines. Let's go through a calculation example. An electron is placed midway between two parallel charge plates connected to a potential difference of 600 volts. So let's say the top plate is positive, 600 volts, and the bottom plate has a potential of zero volts. The reason why I know the top plate is positive and the bottom is negative is because the field lines are running downward. The field lines will always go from the positive charge plate to the negative charge plate, or from higher potential to a lower potential. The charge plates are separated by 0.25 meters, as shown by the diagram. And this electron is of course midway between the two points. Calculate the force acting on the electron due to the field. So we know that the force is equal to Q times by E. And since this electric field is produced by two parallel charge plates, we can write this in terms of the potential difference between them divided by the distance of separation, so V over D. The charge on the electron is given by the data sheet, which is minus 1.602 times by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. The potential difference is 600 volts, and the distance of separation is 0.25 meter. This gives a force value of minus 3.84 times 10 to the power of minus 16 newtons. Now, since force is a vector quantity, we need to also describe the direction of the force vector. An electron is a negatively charged particle, which means the force acting on this negative charged particle will be towards the positively charged plate, upwards. This force vector is parallel to the field lines, but opposite to their directions. And that's the reason why we have a negative in the value for force. Which means we can also rewrite our final answer by replacing the negative sign with towards the positive plate. What is the acceleration of an electron? Assuming the force due to the electric field is the only force acting on the electron, we can say that the net force, which by Newton's second law, is also equal to mass of the electron times by its acceleration, is equal to the force due to the electric field, which is minus 3.84 times 10 to minus 16 newtons. Therefore, the acceleration of the electron is the force divided by its mass. The mass of the electron can also be found in the data sheet, which is 9.109 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms, which gives a value of minus 4.22 times 10 to the power of 14 meters per second squared. Again, since acceleration is a vector quantity whose direction should be the same as that of the net force, the negative sign indicates that the electron will be accelerating upwards at 4.22 times 10 to the power of 14 meters per second squared. So we can also rewrite this final answer as 4.22 times 10 to the power of 14 meters per second squared towards the positive plate. This concludes the video on introduction to electric fields. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.